welcome to the today's lecture on coordinate systems this is a part of my lecture on the subject of application of geoinformatics in water resource management and this subject is a part of the course on MTech in Hydroinformatics Engineering offered by Civil Engineering Department of NIT Arkansas. So let us begin. As you know that to represent a point on the earth surface, we use that and long. And when we represent that same point in 2D, this is your 3D and this is your 2D. So that point is also represented by lat and long. However, when this point on a 3D surface is superimposed on a 2D surface, some models or some numerical numerical solutions are made to predict the location of this point available on the 3D surface onto the location of the same point onto the 2D surface. Basically, you know, art is not a circle or it is not a pure circle. It is an un, a circle like its shape is circle like but it is not exactly circle. We can say it as a circle with undulating circumference. That means this is actually what Earth looks like from the space. As you can see, its circumference is undulating. But we can imagine a circle inside it and all the point on the Earth surface can be imagined as a point on the surface of the circle. But generally we do not use 3D map for a normal calculation we often use 2D maps and when we try to superimpose this the point on the 3D surface to the same point on the 2D surface we use a projection system. Projection system is actually a model which predict the location of a point on the 2D surface based on the location of the point on the 3D surface. So actually this is a prediction on prediction because this point is actually located in the geoid. This typical shape is known as geoid. The, a circle with undulating circumference. And this, the point on the geoid is superimposed or predicted on the 3D surface. And this point in 3D surface is placed or predicted in 2D surface. So basically a model is used to predict the point on a geoid, which is the exact location of the point on the geoid, on a 3D surface. And uh, another projection system is used to predict the location of the same point on the 3D surface based on the location of the point on the 3D surface on the location of the same point at the 2D surface. So basically the location of this point on geoid is used for prediction of the location of the same point in 3D and 2D. That means the location of this point in 3D is projected on the location of this point on 2D. Right? So basically the coordinate system 
which represent this one, the location of a point on 3D surface is known as geographical coordinate system or GCS and the coordinates which represent the point, the same point on the 2D surface is known as projected as this is a model which predict the location of this point based on the location of this point at the 3D surface is known as projected coordinate system. Because it is a prediction, it is known as projected coordinate system. However, this coordinate system is also a, based on the model. This is also a projected coordinate system where the exact location of the point on the GUI is predicted on a 3D circle or surface of the 3D circle. So, uh, as I have already said that Earth is a GUI, it is not a circle, it is not any other shape, not a ellipsoid, it is not a spheroid, but it is a GUI. Because as you can see, our surface is not regular, it is irregular. So you can see this is actually the art, this is the geoid, right? Art without topography, and this is the ellipsoid. So basically, when we try to project the location of this point on a geoid onto the location of the same point at a ellipsoid, this is our projection, right? So, this is a prediction which is known as GCA, Global Coordinate System. But when we try to predict the location of the same point on a 2D surface, this becomes your projected coordinate system. Right? And uh, so, here you can see. The reference points on the surface of the heart is projected on a spheroid or ellipsoid. If you sphere or ellipse, if you. So you can understand that when a point on the geoid is projected on a ellipsoid or spheroid, it is a prediction which is represented by GCS. And this is a 3D. And when the same thing is represented on a sphere or ellipse, ellipse which is 2D, sphere ellipse which is 2D drawn on a plain paper. So then that become a projected coordinate system. So the basic difference between a GCS that is geographic coordinate system or sometimes it is also known as global coordinate system and projected coordinate system is the model used for predicting the location of a point on a spheroid or a 3D surface based on the location of the same point on the geoid that is the actual shape of earth surface. So this has become GCH and when the same GCH is projected on a 2D surface or same point is projected on a 2D surface it become PCS. So basically from geoid to spheroid or ellipsoid it is your GCS global coordinate system and from GCS to PCS to 2D it's your PCS or projected coordinate system. So in case of the error in the prediction of GCS is lesser compared to PCS, okay, because it is very easy to predict within a similar surface, because geoid is also a 3D, where each of the point is perpendicular to the gravity. So this is, geoid is also sometimes a 3D, only thing is its circumference is very irregular. And when this 3D to 3D prediction is done, the errors are less compared to that when the prediction is done between 3D to 2D surface, so like that, okay. So, 
So basically, this is your coordinate system, which are mainly used in GIS, or to represent the uh, location of a point on on the Earth surface. So as I have already said, we can divide it into mainly two distinct classes: that a geographical coordinate system or GCS, and projected coordinate system (PCS). And another uh, system can be another class can be derived. Which is the custom projection system where the cadastral maps or survey maps are plot, which are custom, which do not use any model, but it is a custom system. So GCS under GCS there is continental, county, solar, lunar, etc., which is represented under the groups. Uh, actually, uh, this is the coordinate system. The different types of coordinate system under the same coordinate. Class is classified under groups, okay, and then these groups are classified under names. So GCS is a coordinate system, and there are various different types of uh, there are different types of coordinate system uh, which can can be classified under GCS, like continental, which is valid. For specific continents only, then county, the GCS which are valid for counties only, then the solar GCS developed based on the uh, location of a point with respect to its solar distance, and lunar, and many other things. So this is this follows sun, this follows moon. Sometimes the location of a point on the Earth's surface is derived with the help of the location of sun, with respect to the location of the point on that surface of the Earth or moon, right? So this type of coordinate system is also classed under GCS, global coordinate system. And then we have subclasses of this continental, county, and these things. We can club them as uh, Everest. Continental can be clubbed under European, Asian, African. So each continent has its own coordinate system, and also coordinate system can be developed based on some distinct features on the on the Earth surface, like Everest. Right, Everest is a very distinct feature. The tallest structure in the whole earth, the tallest natural structure in the whole earth, whole earth. So, so this way we can divide the GCS global coordinate system into class subclasses, and the subclasses continental, county, solar, etc. into tertiary classes, or you can say as secondary classes. Like European, African, Asia, for continental subclass. Then for solar and lunar, we can use Everest subclass, and so on. Then next come our projected coordinate system, which is basically a computer model, which take the location of a point on the 3D surface to derive its location on. Of the same points on two surfaces, so this is basically a projected coordinate system. They are also again subdivided into UTM, Universal Trans Transverse Marketed, NAT, North American Data, etc. And they are further subdivided into EMPC, ETRS, etc. This thing I will discuss again in the later slides. Now this is custom projection. They are cadastral maps. These cadastral maps are uh, used to find the location of a building uh, in a jila map or county maps. These are very detailed maps. So the maps which are used to represent the location of buildings, location of some location of buildings, location of stadiums, location of ponds. Within a district, within a jila, within a very 
very sharper resolution uh, area. So those are represented by cadastral maps or survey maps. So basically what happened is you see the projection system works like this. Right. So this is what you can say as your a point on the art surface which is represented by GCS, global coordinate system, and which is actually uh, developed based on the continent. Right? Then after continent comes country. This is your continent, Asia, Africa, Europe, etc. This is the country, India or Sri Lanka or Bangladesh. Then from India you come into states like Tripura, West Bengal, etc. In case of uh, country, uh, in case of India. Then from Tripura you can go to Jila districts, Jirani, right? Tripura West, Tripura North, etc. Then from Jirani you can come into further subdivision that is your Rani Bajar, right? So, and this Rani Bajar can be again subdivided into some Jilas or some, what I get, some more, more sharper locations. So basically, when the continent, you represent a point based on its country, location with respect to continents, the error is much more compared to the location represented with respect to its country and, and so on. So if you represent a location with respect to this Jila subdivision, Rani Bajar, and when you represent the same location with respect to the district, Accuracy will be much more in case of Rani Bajar compared to district Jira. And then the accuracy of a location with respect to Jirania will be more compared to the location represented with respect to in state Jirania and so on. So more accurate representation of location of a point, you have to move deeper, more sharper resolution of the Earth surface. So this best resolution or most surf sharper resolution is used under the cadastral maps or survey maps. So I have already discussed about the geographic coordinate system, projected coordinate system, custom coordinate system, which is mainly used in to represent location on a map. 3D map or 2D map. And in case of GIS, what we do is we, we you try to digitize a 2D map. So there also some mapping of location is required because when we import a map, all its location is represented in latitude and longitude, which is a 3D coordinate or 2D coordinate, we can say. D coordinate and when you convert it into a map in a GIS software, what happens is that the coordinates of the location with the 2D surface has to be converted or mapped into the coordinate of the software or the computer. So basically GIS program has to deal with three types of coordinates. One is a screen coordinate, that is this mouse is moving the coordinates of these points are represented by the screen coordinate. And in, in case of screen coordinate, zero is located in the upper left corner, right? So this is the screen coordinate which represents the location of your mouse pointer or any, any feature displayed on the computer with maps or images or on the desktop of the computer or in, on, a, in, on the computer screen. Now projected map coordinate is the actual coordinates of the location on the map. So these are projected map coordinates. 
to which the stream coordinates must be mapped to accurately represent the location of the points being digitized. And sometimes the geographical map coordinates, the images come uh, with geographical map coordinates, but most of the cases, geographical map coordinates is utilized as the data, as the reference point by which we try to find out the error of the points on a digitized map. So let us explain it a bit further. Suppose on an earth surface, this 3D surface, the coordinates of a location A is 30 degree centigrade, uh, sorry, 33 degree north and 92 degree east. Suppose this is the assumption. Okay, this is the coordinates of the location situated on the earth surface, which is, which is a 3D, which is a spheroid or ellipsoid. This is represented as a geographical coordinate system, which is most accurate uh, compared to the location of the point on the geoid. So, this most accurate location which is represented by the GCS is mapped into the PCS, projected coordinate system, which is the 2D. Right? Now, the coordinates are represented in land and long only. The same coordinates are used, but in the 2D surface. So, some amount of error has already been incorporated in this projection. Now, this projected coordinate system, when mapped into the screen coordinate system, some more error is incorporated in that conversion because these are all conversion from 3D to 2D, 2D to screen. But this conversion is required to represent the point on the uh, on the digitized map with the help of latitude and longitude. So the error in SCS it is much more compared to the error in PCS and error in PCS is much more compared to the error in GCS. However, the most accurate representation of the location is on the GOIT. That is why, uh, sorry, this is not error, this is accuracy. Accuracy in AC, SCS is lesser compared to accuracy in PCS, and accuracy in PCS is lesser compared to accuracy in GCS. But the highest accuracy is observed in the point represented on the geoid, right? But this geoid is a very theoretical concept. That is why we can use the GCS. And we use the GCS as a data, as a reference point. That means this is the zeroth point. So to know the error on PCS or SCS, we try to compare the location of the point with respect to the location of the point represented by the GCS. So, this is what data is also. So, as I was discussing in the previous slide, so GCS, the geographical coordinate system, in three dimension reference system, that means 3D, that locates the point on the earth surface, that means they Assume that art surface is spheroid, but basically the art surface is geoid. Geoid is a geographical shape where it, it, it is similar to a spheroid, but with undulating circumference. Right? And here the latitude longitude uses decimal degree or degree. And uh, the, as I have already discussed, when you are moving from on the polar to polar, that means south to north, you are crossing different latitudes, but you are moving 
through the same longitude. But when you are moving from west to east, you are uh, crossing different longitudes, but you are moving on the same longitude. Right? So, we are discussing about projected coordinate system in the previous slides, but what are they? I have already explained. Now, basically, what happens is uh, in the projected coordinate system, the location of the point on the 3D surface is traversed uh, onto a 2D surface. So, how it is done? You can see if I uh, if I take a 2D paper and create this cone and place the cone above the 3D surface of earth and if earth is painted so the impression of earth that will be transferred to the this 2D surface uh, which is now representing a cone is actually a projection. So let me explain it more clearly. Let us say this is a ball which is your art in 3D. And this 3D is, is, is uh, this 3D ball is uh, what I can say is, is uh, we, we submerged this 3D ball into a bucket of color. Right? We submerged this ball. We, we totally submerged this ball into a bucket of color, say red or blue, whatever you may, you may choose. Then we take out this ball and we take a 2D paper and make a cone with that 2D paper, right? Now, if this 2D, if this cone, which is made up of the 2D paper, is now placed upon this 3D ball, which was submerged, totally submerged in a red color, after the ball is taken out from that uh, red color, so what will happen? The points at which this 3D ball drenched in red color touches the 2D surface which was, uh, which was used to make a cone, then the impression of the surface of the ball, 3D ball, will be transferred into the 2D surface. And when we will open this cone, back to the 2D paper, then the impression of the 3D surface will be there. So, this impression will represent the location of all the points on that 3D surface onto the location of the same points on the 2D surface. So, this is your projected coordinate system, where the 3D, the location of the location of the points on the 3D surface is projected on the uh, 2D surface and the system by which it is projected is known as projected coordinate system and the points after projected on the 2D surface is represented by the projected coordinate system. Now if you use the 2D paper to make a cylinder, right, and then you wrap the 3D ball drenched in the red color by this cylinder made up of the 2D paper and then you open the open the 2D paper but then you then you again then you open the cylinder to, uh, back to the 2D paper then the impression of this ball will be there on the 2D paper around this this part right so this part will then represent the points on the 2D, 3D surface in this 2D surface. So this is our 
projection. So when just the 2D paper is just placed upon this uh, 3D ball drenched in red color, then the impression of this surface will be transferred to the 2D surface then that become the projected location of the points on these areas of the 3D surface in a 2D surface. Right? So this is basically a projection. So here you can see when we make a cylinder with the help of the 2D paper, then the impression of the points in this region is accurately transferred to the 2D surface. However, the points in this region is erroneously transferred into the 2D surface or not transferred at all. So, error in these places outside this line is much more compared to the error in these places. Right? So, error in this and this is much more compared to error in this. So these lines are known as second lines, which bounded or which display the boundary of the location, which are which which make the impression of themselves directly onto the 2D paper, and their accuracy of the projection is much more compared to the location impression of location of this side. Now you see, you can make different uh, shapes with the help of the 2D paper and take the impression of the 3D art on it, right? So the location of the the location of the points which are uh, which which make a direct touch on the 2D surface will have much more accuracy compared to the location of those points which will have no touch on the 2D surface. So what happens is when you are using a, a 2D cylinder and then you are engulfing the 3D ball into the 2D into the 2D paper, then you see only the this part is the impression of this part is only transferred directly to the 2D paper. And the impression of these points are little hazy. And the impression of these points are not available in this uh, in this cylinder, in this 2D paper in a cylinder shape. So you can easily assume that the transfer of location from 3D to 2D surface in this part has less accuracy compared to this part. So that is why this is known as second line, which delineates the more accurate region from the less accurate region. Basically, these are more distorted impressions are there for these locations, but these are here the distortion are much less. So this is a very clear representation of the GCS and PCS. GCS defines where the data is located on the R surface. PCS tells the data how to draw it on a flat surface, like on a paper map or computer screen. So this is the basic difference between GCS and PCS. Here is a pictorial representation, as you can see. When your 2D surface is used to make a cylinder, and then that 3D ball drenched in red color is placed inside it, it will make impression. This is already explained in the previous slide. And here in this part, the impression will be more accurate compared to in this part. Here the impression will be distorted because they have not touched the 3D ball uh, when engulfed in the cylindrical shape. Okay. And when this 2D surface is used for form, here it is used. Conical, this one as conical. When just the 2D surface is placed on the polar region, then it will take an impression like this. 
only the polar region will be interest in will be transferred in that to be surface. All other region, equatorial region will not be seen in this type of projection. So this is known as black. This is known as conical. This is sorry. right, and this 3D surface can be ellipsoid, can be spheroid, and you see this is in your x-axis, this is y-axis, this is z-axis, 3D. So these things I have already described. So. We have already discussed a lot about projection. Now you see, different projection system try to preserve different properties of the 3D surface. So here in the 3D surface, there are going to be four special properties which can be distorted. One is shape of the property, shape of a feature, geographical feature. Another is the area of the geographical feature. Another is distance between the two points and the direction. So these four special properties of a geographical feature can change when it is projected from the 3D surface to the 2D surface. So when shape is preserved, that means we take extra precaution to preserve or to, to reduce the error of the projection of a geographical feature, the shape of the geographical feature when it is protected, when it is assumed to be more accurate compared to the other features, then it becomes a conformal projection. When area is preserved, it becomes equal area projection. When distance is preserved, it, 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 it is referred as equidistant projection. When the direction is preserved, it is known as as in the position. So each type of map is good at preserving for one or two of the four special properties. So it is better to use small maps of the large area and using different uh, type of projection for different section. Right. So let me let me uh, uh, summarize this. You know, suppose there is a lake. Okay. So lake is like this in the 3D surface, geographical coordinate system. When this lake is projected on the 2D surface, this lake can change its shape, can change its area, can change its uh, the distance between two points within the lake or it can change the direction of the lake altogether. But different projection coordinate, projected coordinate system try to preserve one or two of the four special properties in their projection. Now when a projection, uh, when a projection coordinate system or projected coordinate system try to preserve the shape of the feature, it is referred as conformal. When it tries to preserve the area, it is, the projection system is known as equal. When it preserves the distance, projection coordinate system is referred as equidistant. When it tries to preserve the direction, the projected coordinate system is known as azimuth. But the problem is each projection system can preserve only one or two of the four special properties. So when there is a big feature, <coughs> sorry, suppose the Caspian Sea, it's a big, big feature, right? So what happens is, it is better to divide this feature into different sections and use different projection system to represent, to project the different section of the same geographical feature onto the 2D surface. That way, what will happen, a more accurate projection can be created.
So, what is geodesic geometry? Now, this short distance between two points on the 3D surface of the Earth can be represented either by its geodesic distance, which is represented as Z, G, or by its uh, projected distance, which is the distance between two points in the 2D surface. So, let us compare these two. You see the geodesic property, geodesic distance, which is the distance between two points on the 3D surface, is this one. And the distance between the same two points in the 2D surface is this one. In, if, you, if you compare these two distance in practical, practically, you see G is much more accurate compared to P. Because when, when, a, P, when a man try to visit B from A on the 3D surface, he traverses this distance only the geodesic distance on it. He cannot traverse the planet distance because it is going through the spiral. So he, the man cannot traverse that distance. He has to traverse the 3D distance that is through the surface of the earth. So when you are representing the 3D version of the earth, you know it is better to represent the distance between two points with the help of geodesic geometry. But when you are representing these two points on the 2D surface, you can use the planar distance of the points. Because on that case, you are only considering the 2D, you are, you are not considering the 3D. So naturally, the 2D will give you the more accurate result because there is no existence of G. Because there is no 3D here. Third dimension is absent here. So, when you are using considering 3D surface, when you are considering Earth as a 3D surface, use geodesic geometries. When you are considering Earth as a 2D surface, use planar geometry. So, thank you. This concludes my presentation. You can scan this QR code. To, to see my books available online, you can subscribe me by scanning this QR code or you can visit my online bookshop by scanning this QR code.